session, I guess, was to try and tease out um, what it's actually like to do business in Papua New Guinea's two major business centres, Leigh and Port Moresby. And I'm delighted um, we've got John Byrne uh, here, uh, the president of the Leigh Chamber of Commerce. Um, one of the things we repeatedly have to say to people outside of PNG is that Port Moresby is not Papua New Guinea. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> and uh, uh, so I'm delighted we've actually got you here. We had a focus on Gulf Province yesterday. Yep. I think it's really important for people to understand that, um, the, well, Lai is a, is a major place to do business as well, and there are other parts of Papua New Guinea that are prospective and interesting and worthwhile taking into account for business. But of course, Port Moresby Chamber of Commerce is the largest chamber in the country, and I'm delighted that Vice President Peter Goodwin has stepped in um, to uh, as, um, uh, rescue for old Rio, who's stuck in uh, um, the president, who's stuck in uh, Port Moresby, unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond his control. Um, so we really appreciate, Peter, um, you taking well, the time to join us um, this morning. So let's start, John, if we, if, if we could, with Lay. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time when Lay had a reputation as the pothole city, that it was very much the second city and whatever, but... No, no, um, never. <laughs> Not the city I know. <laughs> One would have to say that things are on the improve as far as infrastructure in Leigh, though. Absolutely. Um, it still has streets with potholes, there's no doubt about it. But uh, I've only been in Leigh for six years, so I haven't seen the worst of it. But I've seen a lot of improvement in the last six years. Uh, most of our main thoroughfares are much better. The drag between Yalu Bridge and, the, and Nine Mile is now being under, under repair, so we have, soon we'll have the infrastructure of that highway, a four-lane highway, pretty much all the way to Yalu Bridge and then the highway to airport. We also have the airport being commissioned soon enough to start, which is great. That, that's a major a, project. A major project. And as everybody has said and experienced in anywhere in the world, Cairns City, wherever, when you have an international airport and you have a highway, you've got access, real access. And that's what we're really, really keenly looking for. And that will really improve the city. But the holes themselves, there's a couple out there. There was a man from Koki yesterday. He knows one road very well, but, uh, but we're working on it. Uh, so very much so. So, yeah. But all the money went to a little city downtown called Moresby. What can you do? What can you do? It's time to stop spending money in Moresby, spend it in the rest of the provinces. I'm here to sell lay, everybody, in case you hadn't noticed. And you can see the difference in lay. This is lay, colourful and bright. Mm, that's enough. Thinking Moresby is a pinstripe city, is that what you're <laughs> correct, saying? Correct. <laughs> sorry, Peter. D don't be sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think a healthy lays um, a, a great, yeah. uh, a great situation to have for the country. Mm. And even though uh, the 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 story about this little um, event this morning for this 30 minutes was a tale of two cities, I'm sure there will be no revolution. Um, that was my line. It was on my well, line. Well done. You did some research. Congratulations. Bugger. But it used to be, you know, if you hadn't heard a, a rumour by 10 o'clock in Lay, start one. Um, but, but, there isn't, but there isn't any competition between Moresby. And I, I've, only, yeah. I've been around since 83, on and off, right? Mm. And um, I, I think it's a great thing to see Lay. It's the gateway to the Highlands. Uh, um, a, a strong Lay uh, will only complement Port Moresby and, and be great yeah. for public. Moresby's Mors 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 head office. Well, Always be his head office, you know, right? And and Lay is the workhorse and the engine room. That's the truth of it. Well, it's that's it's the truth of it. Like it's kind of like Cairns and Townsville. Yeah, true. Um, in many yeah, respects, exactly. even in terms of weather patterns. Um, so uh, Townsville's a bit like Moors, a bit dry and dusty, especially this time of year, and um, and Lay's wet all the time. So um, well, hang on, that's, you not, know, so, that's, not, that's so, not true. We had two we had two dry days last year. Uh, well done. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to count that, that many, uh, but, but, it, but it's a good thing. No, in no, all seriousness, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really very pro, pro lay and the, and the advancements that are taking yeah. place there. And, and the sooner you get in, international capacity right. there, the better right. for you and the better for exactly. the country. Exactly. I mean, there is a, is a challenge, isn't that if you want to visit lay at the moment, you have to transit through Moors Port Moresby. Yeah, correct. That's yeah. right. That's a challenge. It's great for our New Guinea, Alan. Well done. Good work. <laughs> but uh, there's a challenge. To, and it's also a challenge for businesses who are in Lay who need to travel to Moresby, getting up and down that highway, you know, taking a risk on uh, issues with some planes where you have to go down the night before, that style of business. So it delays the progress. But that is all progress in progress and changing. Mm. And it will. Mm. 
It it's would. a cost of business as well. Yeah, correct. It's a major impost to business. business. Yeah, correct. Exactly. So, I mean, one of the other things, of course, Leh is, is the country's busiest port. And historically, there have been some challenges with the efficiency of the port. Mm. What's the state of play as far as how the port is being run at the moment and what your members are telling you about um, how quickly they're getting their goods through that port structure? Things are very quiet on that, on that front, which means either people have, uh, have adjusted their heads to it, which is dangerous, or it's improving. My understanding is it's improving. The, the uh, processing ICTSI have taken over the port, which is part of uh, SPICTL, and I've got a few more acronyms I can throw in there as well if you like. Um, but um, the efficiencies are improving. Um, we are the biggest port by far, and uh, for that very reason, as Peter pointed out, we, everything's coming up and down the Highlands Highway, so um, and that will stay the same for some years until the Gulf gets its programs working and other things happen, that will be the same. So we need it to be an efficient port. Yeah. The members are saying it's uh, it's uh, We've had a lot of meetings where people have been throwing rocks and bringing spears to the door and whatever else, uh, but that's that's all tempered down. So it's very positive news. The ports are doing a much better what job. What about the um, Highlands Highway? Because that's always been a real challenge, right? You know, to get a, a cargo up and down. That's and still a challenge. Yeah, that's still a challenge. There's uh, um, the Chinese have uh, done a, a deal with the government where there's over 10 years will build rebuild the highway, but uh, major major trucking companies like Mapai and and uh, Tracer and IPI will always have challenges up and down at the high, there's no doubt about it, for a period of time. We will be hearing later on today some of the action that's being taken on the Highlands mm. Highway uh, mm. in the session after morning tea, so mm. um, they'll hopefully we'll get some good news. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll, write, I'll, I'll record that one. Yeah. So um, I'm going to jump in uh, to Peter in a second, Please. but just one final thing, to, I guess, to give a flavour of what lays light to do business. Sure. And, and uh, through the eyes of the Chamber of Commerce, I'm wondering what kind of activities the Chamber runs for its members and what kind of uh, activities as a Chamber of Commerce you do that maybe you wouldn't do if you were in, say, Australia or, or another, an, another, another country. Are there some particular activities that uh, the Chamber takes on that maybe are particular to the lay Chamber? Well, I don't know that I can answer that last bit about the other countries because I've never been in the Chamber before. Um, but certainly, uh, I think... From what I see about the POM Chamber, we're pretty much the same where we do a lot of interaction with government, we do a lot of interaction with our members, we do, we have a young chamber that I call Mind Place, which is a place of mind where we're engaging the younger people to start taking leadership and control. We're, in goal, we're involved with the Friends of the Lay Botanic Gardens, trying to get those community works and getting a lot of community networking going to have the community rebuild the city and, get, and have pride in the city, which is what happens in any, in any um, place when it goes down it goes down because people let it go down so we're very actively involved in, in those type of projects um, the Australian consulate does a great great work with us up in up there and as all, as the New Zealand the consulate Australian does as well. consulate is relatively new in, in Lays. Yeah very yeah. new very new and that's a good sign for Lay as well as, as is the uh, what I call the Reserve Bank the Bank of PNG putting a, a currency operation up there it just shows that Lay is very important in the infrastructure of, of uh, Papua New Guinea it's a I don't like using the word industrial city because when I close my eyes, all I see is smokestacks and chimneys and all that style stuff. But it is, it, we are a manufacturing city. We are the, when I said before, tongue in cheek about the engine room of the country, we do a lot of manufacturing. And when, if you're looking for to invest in manufacturing and grow in that style, lays the city to do it in. Because we have, the, we have a lot of population, 300,000 people in Lay City. We've got a new hospital being developed as we speak at the moment, which is fantastic, uh, with all the outliers being done at the same time, so there's not going to be an influx of people coming to Angau. That's through the um, DFAT, the Australian Government. Um, so the Chamber is involved in lots of things, and we, our, all of our members have different portfolios. Our members are, if, they, if they're a member, as in, sorry, the, the council members, if you work in engineering, that's your portfolio, so you've got to, you've got to report backwards and forwards. So we're, being actively involved, going out, talking to business about what's happening, what's happening in your market. What I'm going to do now, actually, um, if I can get the attention of the gentleman at the back, um, is before we go on to talk a little bit mm. more about Port Moresby, um, we might just run a short video we've been sent um, uh, uh, promoting Lay. John, you brought with you. Mm. Um, do you want to um, set this up in any way? Or? Yeah, sure. Just um, when I was in the uh, 35th Australia PNG conference in Moresby, all I heard was pom, 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 pom. 
Sorry, and I was getting angry, and I was getting angry. I was getting angry, saying, "What? What? Is there anybody else in in Papua New Guinea other than Moresby?" And I thought, "Hang on a minute, stand up and talk." And I said, I went back and, and wrote our newsletter to our members. I said, "You know what? We've got to. If we want to be there, you've got to start wearing colourful shirts and get out on the stage and say to people, this is who we are. This is what we do.'" So in a matter of five days, we pulled together a video, and I wanted a, a Moravian to do it, and I wanted Moravian people involved in it. Right? So it's, it was all it's localised. So we've, this is not the final cut, but it's a, was something we're proud of and just shows a bit about what Lay City is about. A lot of people come in and out of uh, PNG and never get outside of PNG, Moresby. So it just shows you a bit about the city and we'd love to have you come and invest with us, come and talk to us and, so, and show how to grow the country. Because we, at the end of the day, as Peter said, sorry, a healthy Lay City, a healthy Moresby, a healthy Gulf is a healthy PNG. And that's what we want, healthy and growing. Um, okay. the, the video, please. Lay is the second largest city of Papua New Guinea, mainly an industrial hub, but it's also called the Garden City of Papua New Guinea. We want to make Lay a welcome spot for investors. We want to attract investors here in Lay, taking into account that uh, we will be having a brand new international airport that is being built by the Japanese government at about the cost of 800 million. That's uh, in the pipeline. We will also host the biggest port in Papua New Guinea and it serves the Highlands and PNG. We also have uh, six tuna factories here and a big uh, tuna fishing hub in, uh, in the city of Leigh. We are at this point in time trying to ensure that all investors in Leigh are looked after. We're trying to make certain that we address first the law and order situation, make certain that they have proper easy access to business here. For the last two years, with the help of a good bunch of policemen with new ideas, with new approaches to fighting crime, we've dropped the crime level in Leigh by 80%, an incredible 80%. Leigh is one of the much safer cities now in Papua New Guinea, albeit it still has a lot more to, for us to pursue. We've got to improve on that, but we are showing steady progress. The opportunities and potential are enormous for the people that want to take the step out and do something very different and come and assist with the uh, development of our city. We are open arms to any business houses that want to come at best. We are a point of contact for anyone that wants to know more information uh, with the city. If you want to see major growth in your company, if you want to see major growth in your industry, uh, Lay is potentially a very good spot for you to have a look at. As a member for Lay, me and my people of Lay would really like to see investors here. We will warmly welcome you and we'll do everything possible to help you uh, invest in our beautiful city.
to say now. You've got to top that. But that's, that's a great video, and it's a great, si great and simple message. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Port Moresby. Mm. Um, it would be fair to say that Port Moresby has probably had a, a lot more investment uh, given to it as far as its infrastructure over the last few years. Mm. Um, how would you decide, what would you say about the progress in, as far as that is concerned? You've got a new port, for example. You've got um, quite a lot of investment went into the, the city as a result of APEC last year. Yeah. I think it's pretty natural that there is going to be a significant amount of investment. It's the country's capital. Mm. And if you look at that example right across the world, it's natural that right. there's going to you know, attract investment. Um, but I think it's also notable that there's been immense change. I, I first went to... Um, to Moresby in 1983, on the 9th of February actually, and, um, and there's been an enormous amount of change, not all of it's good. Um, you know, there are some negative aspects that go hand in hand with, um, with growth. Um, examples of, you know, classic examples of the great urban drift, and so hand in hand with that you, you have issues around law and order, but mm. we, we can't forget that we're an emerging nation. And I, I think as an example of the change that's taken place for me, in those years. Uh, well, today we're joined by the, um, the CEO of the Port Moresby Chamber, Stacey O'Neay, a female, a Papua New Guinean, um, and we've got the treasurer of the Port Moresby Ch Chamber, Archive Beach, a Papua New Guinean, a female, and, um, and Vani Nardes, a Papua New Guinean, a female. I mean, so in these days when we talk about gender balance and empowering Papua New Guineans, um, it's not just all about us tau kuru kuru, uh, the, the white men sitting up here, with, you know, one of us has got grey hair. Um, and, and so... And, 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 so a better, and a better shirt. Yeah, yeah well done, mate. very attractive. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think there's been immense change and great growth and, and, uh, and there are challenges. Mm. But as we said before, um, this is not an adversarial situation. Okay. This is looking at what is great yeah. for lay will also be great for us. Oh, Indeed, um, the business that I uh, work for, Remington, its second most important profit centre is lay. And um, in some respects, we've let that lie fallow, but it's, it, it, we've got a significant investment there and we want to see more of it. Mm. Um, we're just about to launch a hub, uh, the, a Highlands hub out of Hagen. And because, I mean, there's a significant population in Hagen. Mm. Um, now it's about providing jobs and opportunities for our people. Yep. And that's, that's a message that was le delivered loud and clear by the minister yesterday morning. Right. Um, so, yeah. I want to talk um, a little bit about the interaction you have with government. Obviously, that's one of the things that the chambers uh, of commerce are able to do, is act as a voice for the business community to government. Um, just the, uh, your comments, Peter, first of all, about um, the National Capital District government. Mm. Um, and and their vision for the city and how that ties in with the business community? Um, well, obviously, uh, a strong business community means a strong uh, NCDC and vice versa. We need to have strong leadership, strong government coming out of NCDC. And I, I, I have to say that there's a really good and strong and vibrant connection between Powers Parkop and his team and our team. Um, and that's improving every day. Um, and I think there's a real recognition of, of the fact that private enterprise is going to drive the economy in Papua New Guinea. And uh, we continue to hear about extraction and so on, and, and there, it's about spreading risk. And the Minister spoke about having all these eggs in one basket yesterday. We can't just rely on mining and so on, but we've got a great uh, relationship with, with NCDC, and there's really strong leadership and vision coming out of, out of the NCDC, and you're going to show a uh, 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 some vision about Moresby. Um, but think of the extraordinary change. I mean, PNG is very cosmopolitan, but Moresby is cosmopolitan today compared to what it used to be even 20 years ago. I mean, there's any number of hotels to go to. You can get a great cup of coffee just about anywhere. Um, you, you, you know, there's lots of things to do in terms of entertainment. Um, and the um, NCDC has been spending a lot of time and effort to make sure that it, it's an attractive place to be. Mm. Limit risk. CCTV um, in the law and order space is very helpful, um, but that needs more de development too. Likewise, the Morobi gov government has also plays a very important role, and also the Lay City. Lay City in particular. Uh, yeah, Lay City. Well, um, 
what sort of relationship does the chamber have with those, and, um, ha and how how does it look to improve the situation for business? Uh, very strong. Uh, John Rosso, who was on the, on the screen then, is a remarkable man. He's um, very passionate about LA, um, he's, as most people are, about their own their own provinces and place. Uh, but he's a businessman. He understands uh, running a business. We've now just formed an LCA, a LA City Authority, which is somewhat similar to the NCDC, which is where the model can go, so we can clean up some of the perhaps perhaps um, unseedy structures that have happened below with a bit of uh, money being misappropriated and various other things and get a control of the checkbook. Uh, John is very, very, works very closely as Neil does. Neil Ellery, who's the acting CEO of the LCA and the, uh, the relationship between business and, and that level of government is outstanding. Yeah, we're always in communication with each other. We build programs together. Uh, they use us, we use them, and as you said, and I agree with you 100%, Peter, Business is where that is what will put this, yeah. this country back together. Government in any country sets charter. Business is, business is funding and driving it. If we don't have investors, we don't have people yeah. growing the country, it will not happen. Yeah. Simple as it is. Yeah. It's about confidence, isn't it? Exactly. Correct. Um, and it's, it's the elephant in the room because we really need to talk our place up. That mm. You know, if you want to look for negatives, you can find yeah, them. You can find them everywhere. Up. Exactly. Exactly. But, but, but I think people have demonstrated by the fact that we've got a, a room full of, of um, people here today that there is confidence in Papua New Guinea. It's a great place to do business. Um, it, it's, it, and we spoke about it earlier, it's about risk versus reward. Yeah. Is it risky? Yeah, I guess. But the rewards available to you are great. Mm -hmm. And if we can just get our act together um, and, we, we, and actually do what we say we're going to do. W one thing I can tell you, there'll be people in this room being here a lot longer than me, um, but we, we seem to talk it, up, uh, talk it up a lot, but we don't often get in and get it done. Mm. And, uh, you know, we need commitment yeah. and, and, uh, and solid effort. And the other thing Peter said before is that my comparison between Australian employees and Papua New Guinea employees, I'd, have, I'd employ a Papua New Guinean any day, anywhere, any time. And the women of this nation are remarkable. The work ethic of Papua New Guineans and the ability to want to consume and learn and grow yeah you will not see anywhere in the world. I agree. And business has an, a, a responsibility to help our people grow and become future leaders of this country. Yeah. It's as simple as it is. Yeah. And that comes back to supporting the, the growth of Papua New Guinea and Correct. Papua New Guineans, because it's PNG is owned by Papua New Guineans, right? Correct. Not us. Exactly. Um, and so education is so important, important as well to bring people through, mm. prepare them for tomorrow, because Absolutely. we're not going to be around forever. Correct. So, um, and, they're, and they're the three. They're the three pillars: education, government, and business. Yeah. They can't work in isolation. They have to work together. Yeah. And we've and the country has, has gone through a, ho a hollow, but there's really really positive signs yeah. that we're coming out the other side. There's some plans and strategies going. Let's talk about some of those positive signs. Obviously, mm. there are major projects in the offing. In uh, Morobi Province, you have the Wafi Golpu mm -hmm. um, project, which. Um, uh, Harmony Gold and Newcrest are pursuing, and mm -hmm. while there are there's a hiatus at the moment, um, the plans are there. We sh should expect some progress uh, on that project. Mm -hmm. Papua LNG, who knows? We may hear today, mm -hmm. we may hear tomorrow about what the progress has been in, in Singapore. For both of you, as a final question, what kind of impact do you expect to have these major projects to have on on your cities and uh, on the businesses, on the business communities in, that you represent? Your first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, I, I don't really think that there's going to be any real physical impact immediate. Um, it comes back to the confidence piece for me, because if you, if you create an environment for us all, all, all of us business people, to get out there and do our thing and let us get stuck in with little interference, um, uh, then we will do it, because that's what we do best. We, we're out there to make a buck. Yeah. And what happens? Well, we make money, we become uh, stronger, we employ more Papua New Guineans. I just want to touch on one thing about employing expatriates. Um, the market will look after itself. Um, no one in their right mind goes to buy an expatriate at great expense. Um, when there is an equivalent Papua New Guinean available, we don't have to worry about airfares to and from Sydney or Brisbane or, or Auckland or wherever it might be. Um, if we're allowed to go and do what we need to do and grow our businesses and make them vibrant and strong, we'll bring Papua New Guineans through. Um, so those days of having endless numbers of, of expats, I think, are, are over. But um, I, I think that 
you know, in terms of there's been a lot of build, building in, in Moresby, there's um, any number of um, unit complexes available, it's actually dri driven rents, rent prices down. You can, you can get a good unit there, two or, two or three bedroom unit for much less than what you used to be able to get it for. And, and so um, th then, you know, employers are accommodating Papua New Guineans in better and better accommodation every day. So that's what happens when there's competition. You know, dro it m makes business um, work harder and more efficiently. John? So Wafi Gulf is, is a very important project up in, in Lay, there's no doubt about it. Uh, when it was close to being announced, uh, the confidence level went up. When the brakes went on, the mm. confidence level dropped, which is natural. We would love to see it started. It's not the be all and end all, but it's very important to have that mining going because it's a five year build program and all that sort of stuff. A lot of work for a lot of landowners, a lot of encouragement, which builds the economy. We get better infrastructure in roads that we need because it's, we, once you get out in the Markham Valley, there is just so much agricultural work can be done out in that part of the country. And it's starting to happen. We're getting a lot of people coming in and, and, and wanting to uh, grow Asia in there now with the Grow PNG project. Um, we've got SP Brewery doing a cassava plant up in Airap where they're built, making their own um, grow, pop, tropical punch, uh, power punch, whatever it is. Um, rice being grown in there with uh, um, Sunrise uh, Trukai. Um, so there are all these projects. So, but these projects need investment and we need our people working and then we need education to teach people how to, to, to pull it all together. So it will be slightly different to Moresby. It's more important that Waifu Golpu is kicked off. Yep. I'll, I'll say that right now. It's more important that Waifu Golpu kicks off. Well, on that point, um, I'm going to draw the session to a close, but um, I would encourage uh, everyone, if you haven't met these two gentlemen, um, to take them aside. Um, you'll have a good time and you may learn an awful, awful lot of things in the, in the process. Um, but to, just to wrap up, and we were talking, Peter, about um, the National Capital Devel um, Com Commission. Um, they're doing a lot of work uh, to develop Port Moresby. Uh, they put together this little video and they sent it down. I'm uh, grateful to um, them. It's a, an amazing Port Moresby campaign. Mm which is aimed at, uh, at urban renewal as, as well yeah. as gathering people around a vision for the future. Yeah. I think also if you, if you look at the, um, we, we talked earlier about the, the urban drift and of course the development of um, settlements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, once upon a time there used to be, a, some people proposed that we should bulldoze the settlements, but now common sense prevails and we should actually welcome these people uh, into uh, our shared society in Port Moresby and turn and, and urbanise um, Port Moresby and make it work properly as it should work. Um, and so that's, it's visionary, really. You can't just turn people away. Do you know, the thing I notice, and be a lot of people here know what I'm on about, once upon a time you could look at somebody, a Papua New Guinean, and just about tell where, what They're village from. they came mm. from. Mm. So now, you know, I used to pride myself on that because I was a bit of a wise guy and I thought, we well, used to come from here and, and so on and so forth. I worked in Rebel when I was a young bloke. Um, before the um, volcano, but you can tell. But these days you can't, because people are born in Port Moresby and their mum comes from, you Manus, know, uh, Manus. Manus and their dad's Eastern a Highlander Island. or vice versa. And yeah. it's, it's, we've just really become a completely different situation mm. um, from, from a d demographic piece. So it's interesting. Um, and so that's the future. Absolutely. That's right. And what they'll excited. breed us white fellas out and, and everyone. Well, I'm going to die. I'm, I'm going to die there. I'm going to live and die in Papua <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm back again. I mean, this is my fourth trip. Well, I go. love Papua New Guinea, so mm. there you go. I'm not going to die tomorrow either, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I love hope. PNG. <laughs> well, with that, we might roll the, uh, the second video. Thank you very much. There's beauty in nature that goes beyond man's imagination. It is expressed in a land fashioned out of more than 1,000 tribal cultures, speaking 860 diverse languages, and living in a stunning archipelago of 600 islands, a thriving hub, the jewel of the Pacific. Port Moresby, a capital city of natural beauty, incredible diversity, and amazing people. This is the dawning of a new era for Port Moresby, where we put into action a relevant and actionable plan that will change lives, where women and children are safe, crime and violence 
buildings eradicated. Urban housing is built. The Motu Kweta villages are modernized. Settlements are converted to suburbs. Investments into infrastructure continue. People are upskilled, educated and healthy. A clean, developed and modern city. Flagship events that bring families together to enjoy a beautiful and peaceful time. Port Moresby as a global city and innovative destination for international businesses and travelers. Together, improve our city's global livability and resilience index while supporting the well-being of our citizens. As we endure, adapt and transform, we need everyone to ride the wave of transformation. The time is now to take Port Moresby to the next level making 2019 a pivotal moment for our capital city. This is our city and its success is our success. Today, we present you with a new beginning for Port Moresby, a city of commerce, culture and tourism, international events held in world-class venues of people and businesses coming together as one the jewel is ready to shine. The time is now. Amazing Port Moresby. One city, one people, one future. Yeah, how about that? This is all about visions for the future. Uh, with that, I'm going to thank both John and please thank them, Don and Peter, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.